Well, happy belated May the 4th be with you. It is another edition of the Arms Boom and Like Project tonight, Season 3, Episode 106. We're talking about seasonal issues at this time of year, the warm weather on the horizon, and sitting down and talking with the new mayor of Essex. Sherry Bondi is in my feature interview tonight. We're going to talk about some of the challenges and some of the opportunities that lie ahead for the beautiful town of Essex. It all starts right now. Live conversation here in Windsor, Essex on the Arms Movement Light Project. Let's go. Yes, sir. Welcome to, and ladies as well, uh, the latest edition of the Arms Boom and Like Project coming to you live this evening from beautiful Amherstburg, Ontario. My name is Arms Boom and Like. Happy to have you along for the ride. If you are live in the stream tonight, don't forget we love, I love when you comment along and you join the podcast. Really easy to do so. We're live this evening on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Uh, past episodes, you can always catch up. Find us wherever you get your podcast. You can say, uh, hey, Alexa. Uh, give me that crazy arms woman like, and, and what the heck is he doing nowadays? And uh, they should bring you to the podcast that we've had over the last couple of seasons. You can also find us on YouTube as well. If you uh, care to see some of the guests that have joined us over the last couple of years, hard to believe the show has been two years in kicking. My God, started in 2001 and here we are in 2023, May already. It's almost a two year anniversary of the program. So we're still going strong. We had some format tweaks, um, all sorts of changes to the show based on your feedback uh, and an award-winning video podcast, I should say, as well. Uh, we picked up uh, Best Podcast in YQG from BizX Magazine last year, too. So lots of fun. Love doing the show. Bi-weekly now. Gives me some time to put some bells and whistles and line up uh, some projects and talk about some different cool stuff that is happening here in the Windsor-Essex area. This weather, though, thumbs up, right? Like, my God. Uh, kind of crappy to start the weekend, though. We had some rain. Wasn't necessarily the best, but... Overall, I think Sunday turned out to be really good. I know we were out in the garden uh, in the backyard, the kids and I playing, and Liam and I were uh, going for a walk. We took Olivia to the park here in our neighborhood too. Uh, and then uh, kicking off the month of May, lots of things on the go too. Don't forget that uh, last few days it was uh, May the 4th be with you, a celebration of Star Wars. And our family, as you know, are huge Star Wars fans, at least Liam and I are. So we celebrated in style last Thursday. A couple of comments coming in the live stream. Hey, Richard saying, good evening. Good evening to you, my friend. One of our longtime listeners on the program. A um, couple of uh, home renos on the go here on the show. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, we've kind of been alluding to this on this show as we continue on. And there will be no skip in broadcasts of this program. Uh, we are going to be going through some extensive renovations here in my studios at home. Uh, we've got a pretty cool project, a pretty cool initiative. Uh, it's like HGTV meets Windsor and Essex County, and we'll be debuting it here on social media in the next couple of weeks with some fantastic partners, some of which you have may seen on my other podcast, which is Ask an Expert. We'll get to what's coming up this week on that show. Um, but it's going to be pretty cool. And if Carrie and I don't murder each other, or at the very least get a divorce from what we've got planned, it will be a miracle. Because if you watch the HG television and the Property Brothers and all that kind of stuff, the Ty Pennington stuff, you know that they uh, make home renovations look very easy. That is not the case sometimes, but it can be so much easier when you have the professionals helping you out. So that particular slice of interactive content will be coming very soon here. We'll talk about it on the show, but this whole setup, my, my studio will be uh, in another location. And I'm really excited to share that location with you. Uh, it'll be a little bit quieter. It will be a hike out of my normal home because we're going to have all this extensive work going on in our home uh, over the next couple of weeks and really the next couple of months too. So uh, that'll be on the horizon too. And a shout out to my man, Art. I don't know if you can see the hoodie that I'm sporting tonight, but it is saying uh, AP Painting Solutions. That's one of the big projects that we kicked off over the last couple of weeks here at our home. Um, personally, as a guy, I don't think we had any issues with the color of our walls at home. Um, we don't really have a lot of color variation on the walls in our home. Most of our rooms are white, with the exception of Olivia's room, which is pink. Liam's room's got some comic book stuff, and it's got black and a little bit of gray. But most of our rooms, honestly, in our home are white and black. Carrie wanted to swap that out, and I was like, I don't have the time, and I do not have the energy to paint. So... Enter my buddy Art from AP Painting Solutions to the rescue. Art and his team were here for some initial work this week. Um, and we kind of asked you um, what kind of colors you would like to see for the renovation aspect of this. 
So we had some of that work done. There's still more to come. And if you missed on the color selection and some of the comments, make sure to check out my Facebook page and look for those uh, posts. Search the hashtag uh, Boom and Leg pro uh, Basement, uh, Boom and Leg Painting Project. And uh, you can see some of the comments coming in for that too. So I've got my opinions on home decor and colors and all that kind of stuff. I very rarely get my way. My wife is very much the mastermind behind all things. Uh, but you guys had some really good support in terms of some of the color selections that we were looking at. So lots of home renos at this time of year and uh, a lot of headaches too. Not necessarily from the coordination standpoint too, but if you've been out in the yard putzing around, then this is what I usually do. Uh, you know, if I am working from home or if I'm working late, I'll get out of the home office studio and I'll go into the backyard, go in the front yard. My front yard's decent. It's in good shape. My backyard lawn is just destroyed and we don't even have pets. You know, um, we had a really bad grub infestation last year. I don't know if anybody has had the same kind of issues here locally. I know a lot of folks in our subdivision have said that they've had some grub issues. But generally speaking, the whole layout of our backyard and the kids are back there. I've got my fire pit back there. Um, you know, we, we entertain back there. We've got the music bumping this weekend, but the lawn is just gone to hell. And it looks like I've got patches all over the place. Uh, the dandelions have taken over. Uh, you know, it looks a lot better when it's mowed. But I mowed it on Sunday and I was out there uh, during my lunch hour today. And I'm like, oh, my God, it still looks like garbage. So I don't know. I, I, I see people's lawns and I know lawn care is a lot of work. It's a lot of maintenance sometimes. Uh, my front yard's not bad. I mean, there's some patches from all our inflatables that I usually put up for Halloween and Christmas. And those kind of maintain themselves in the lawn. But our backyard is pretty brutal. So be looking forward to doing some uh, work in the backyard manually and with the assistance of some people that I know as well over the next couple of weeks. So it'll be really interesting to see how we maintain that and how that continues to kind of surface itself. Because you want to make the backyard like somewhat comfortable too, right? And when I was going on TikTok last couple of days, I did notice um, a lot of people taking the planters now. And you know, you see those Edison lights. You know, the solar powered Edison lights are like the the all season bulbs that go up. Um, something I always wanted to do is, you know, get these longer poles, put them into the planters. A lot of people putting the concrete at the bottom of the planter. And then what they're doing is putting some floral arrangements with the concrete is, has sort of tapered off. Um, and then making sure the pole goes straight up and then you put the hook on top of the pole and then you run the solar lights, Edison lights. And I, I thought it was pretty cool. There's quite a few of these uh, instructional videos on TikTok, and you can kind of Google these things too. It just I don't know if we're going to necessarily put that around the fire pit area, if we're going to do it on our patio. Um, but that's another project I'd like to tackle too. And quite honestly, you know, people say, oh, you got all these projects on the go and you're doing this and you're doing that. And I mean, for me, I like doing the manual labor. It, it kind of clears my head a little bit. You know, when you're so often when you're at your desk, you're going from meeting to meeting or you're going out, you're meeting people and you're having those kind of uh, conversations and doing things on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it's easy to discount the joys of doing um, some manual labor. And uh, I, especially on a day like today, very much enjoyed it. So whatever it is that you're doing to kick off this week, don't forget Mother's Day is this weekend too. I don't know if you have any big plans about that as well. It's going to be a pretty big celebration, I think, from start to finish for a lot of folks who are celebrating moms and uh, grandmothers or the mother influence in your life. Um, I know we've got a couple of things planned this weekend too, but nothing huge on the horizon as well. So uh, yeah, lots to get to. And then before you know it, it is the official, unofficial kickoff to summer with Victoria Day coming up on the 22nd as well. So uh, lots to get to over the next little bit and lots happening here in the region when it comes to Windsor and Essex County. Wanted to give a big shout out to our huge sponsor. We haven't made the official announcement yet, but very happy to say that we've got some great support from our community to continue this particular show and the good work and the fun that we have here on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. Uh, the good folks over at Tecumseh Home Hardware on Les Perons and 22 have graciously stepped forward alongside the folks at Essex Home Hardware to sponsor our podcasts and live streams here for the duration of 2023. So I just wanted to give a big shout out. We love making the trip out to Tecumseh and Essex. Uh, they're more than just a hardware store. I actually picked up some really cool bath toys of all things for Olivia at Tecumseh Home Hardware. They've got these really neat um, mermaids that go on the bath or the swimming pool. 
and these little dolls. And Olivia loves hers too. So make sure to swing on by and talk to the staff. If you like to get your stuff bagged, yes, they still bag your things. Who knew that was still a thing? Well, customer service is still a thing at Tecumseh and Essex Home Hardware. They still bag your stuff. They will still greet you with a smile and they will still ask you if you need help when you walk into the store, which to me should be happening. And it doesn't at a lot of these major stores and smaller stores, not at home hardware to come see an Essex. So check them out today. Swing on by if you're doing any kind of home renovation needs for all your products at to come see and home, uh, home hardware in Essex as well. Speaking of the town of Essex, um, I had an opportunity to sit down earlier today with a good friend of mine. She's been on Essex County Council for quite some time. I've interviewed her over the years on CKLW and the CBC about different things and different issues when it came to the town of Essex. And as you know, Essex has gone through a sort of transformation when it comes to municipal leaders over the last couple of years, starting off with a fresh new council and uh, her taking the top job, the mayor's job. Essex Mayor Sherry Bondi spent some time with me earlier today talking about a number of things to do with what is happening in the town itself, including some major development that's coming its way and uh, what they're doing to alleviate some of those needs and concerns to make sure that Essex is positioned to be a, fort, a forerunning a municipality in terms of the influx of people that we're going to be seeing over the next little bit. So uh, here is tonight's feature interview with Essex Mayor Sherry Bondi. And uh, enjoy and take a look at and listen to this insight that uh, the mayor has to share with me on where Essex is going and where she sees opportunity in the next three to five years. This season of the Arms Boom and Lag Project's feature interviews are brought to you by Ron Denno and Arms Boom and Lag, realtors at Bob Peddler Real Estate Limited. Are your listings getting 145,000 people viewing them? More views mean more potential buyers. Ask us about our unique reach only available with Arms and Ron. But downtown Harrow is, is really beautiful and we are seeing investment now because we invested. So it's really cool. You know, the old uh, former antique shop is a, a brand new build now. It was completely demoed. It'll have a lawyer's office on the bottom along with a dentist office. So it's it's pretty exciting in Harrow. And uh, council had a plan to do Harrow and Essex. So now the shovels are in the ground in Essex. You know, it's construction, so it's it's never fun. But we're going with a flex street model. And so that means that we can either have parking on the street or, you know, cafes or sidewalk sales. So it's going to be beautiful and visionary. I don't think there's anything like it around here. No, I was going to say that too, Mayor Bondi. Um, I was just in Essex about a week ago, actually, and I still maintain Essex has such a great opportunity for, I call it the main drag, right? And you have all this great commercial space, all this retail space. I know that there is uh, quite a few businesses along that stretch as well, but you take a look at that and you see what, and I know you hear from constituents all the time on social media as well, but you see the need and the importance of investing. And sometimes it's sort of that short-term pain for long-term gain. And if you can kind of sell Essex specifically that stretch uh, to attract people here, because we all know that you know, this is sort of the calm before the storm with what's happening with investment here in the Essex County region over the next little bit. I think it's um, very beneficial for, for municipalities to sort of shine the apple and put it on the cart when it comes to, you know, wooing people to their particular regions. Right. We, we want to meet our businesses halfway. We want our locals to feel comfortable and we really want that walkable, accessible community. So we're going to be looking at more controlled crosswalks, you know, more benches, more trees. It'll just be really beautiful. So it's it's going to take place. It's will probably be in construction for most of the summer heading into the fall. We're doing a really good job of marketing where our public parking lots are. And I've had, you know, my boots on the ground getting out there supporting our local shops. We really have something for everybody in downtown Essex. And it is really beautiful. We were lucky that the the four the forefathers and mothers of our town created large sidewalks so we can keep that large sidewalk and make it more attractive. Uh, everybody loves trees. And so to see more trees downtown 
will be really beautiful. Bike racks, benches, really a modern look. And also we are doing Victoria Street along with this project. So it's we're getting kind of not two for the price of one, but the contractors will be in the area. So Victoria can come in a little bit uh, cheaper. And also we're getting that infrastructure under the ground replaced. So this beautification is a big investment that we are going to pay for for some years, but we won't have to do it again for many years to come. And I think it's it's a good strategy, I think, when you look at, and I want to get to the topic of ADUs here in the next little bit with you as well, because I know we, we, we had a chance to catch up in person at a fairly big launch for the town and certainly for the region. Um, but I think it's a good strategy to have, again, to market the municipality and to make these investments on the potential for what's coming down the pipe. And I know part of that, you know, with the battery plant, the Gordie Howe Bridge, the new hospital coming into town, there's going to be this sort of deluge of people coming in. Part of that is the tourism development, too. And I know this is something that you've been working on, working with the wineries, agritourism, uh, and taking a look at the Colchester development as well. That's correct. Essex has done a really good job in terms of our community improvement plans in both Essex and Centre. We still have an existing community improvement plan along County Road 50. In our strategic planning session, we are looking at reviewing whether we want to reintroduce those community improvement plans in our downtown cores. We have seen in the last four or five years a drastic reduction in our store vacancies in our downtown cores. So we know what we're doing is helping because we're not just doing the the core investments and walking away we're doing a lot of business supports with mini grants with facade grants with main street marketing with a main street we had an ambassador program through the province where a handful of businesses continued to receive grants for beautification so we're working really hard in our downtown cores we have been and it's it's really paying off and, and you see that too. I think that's that's part of that investment to kind of meet the need and to talk a little bit about, you know, different ways of looking at what's coming in terms of the aging population, but also getting people into uh, living situations that make sense to them and their particular families. And uh, uh, again, this is where you and I started to talk a little bit was at the launch of uh, Petite Homes a few weeks back now in, in Essex. And I was just blown away about the quality um, that, that this is happening in, in the area. But this is one of many, right? Um, this is something where a lot of people are talking about ADUs, which we've talked about here on the show, additional dwelling units, affordable housing, a huge topic too. Uh, ADU search is a, a great resource. This is something that Essex has registered with too. So this has been sort of I'd, I'd assume, Mayor Bondi, something that I know you've been championing because there is going to be a need for this very soon here in the region. Yes, we're lucky in Essex. Even before the Ford government came down with more homes built faster, our staff were looking at how to get additional dwelling units on properties throughout the municipality. So we came up with that, you know, secondary dwelling unit policy and bylaws and zoning. We have rezoned where we can to allow this. And uh, we're kind of uh, on the cutting edge. So we were one of the first local uh, rural municipalities that are smaller to join ADU search. So now if you're a property owner and you know you have a, a senior or you know your 25 year old ch you know child or youth in your basement and you say, hey, you know you have enough property, you would like to build them their own little mini residence on your, on your property, you can go to ADU search find Essex and see if your property is suited to build an additional dwelling unit. And it's neat because I think a lot of people will see the um, possibilities with this and the options and sort of get through that process too, in terms of cutting through some of the, you know, the back end work that needs to do, and then kind of start with that whole, Hey, I can actually do this in my backyard and meet that need for, Again, maybe having mom and dad in the backyard, maybe, uh, you know, getting uh, a work from home situation for people having a home office. But those are all possible with the ADUs, too. And part of what make, makes Essex awesome, and I had a chance to work with the folks who did the uh, Christmas Village last year. I thought they were just phenomenal, uh, phenomenally marketed and, and well done, too. But there's so many different clubs, so many different services that makes uh, Essex very unique and, dare I say, awesome when it comes to community involvement. 
We are really lucky. We have, uh, you know, Rotary, Optimist, Kinsman, uh, many of our local churches and groups. Uh, we actually just had our Rotary clubs organize uh, garbage uh, <laughs> cleanup, and we competed. The Essex and Harrow Rotary Clubs competed against the Kingsville Cotton Rotary Clubs for on Earth Day, and uh, we won. <laughs> it was super competitive over here. So. It, it is good because more people coming together, you can just see a difference. I know the Harrow Rotary Club is working on a boat show in Harrow right now at the old Petro gas station, something to watch out for. And our Optimist Clubs are always doing great work. I, I couldn't be more proud of the work that our volunteer organizations do and the opportunities they give to really bring a sense of community to the town, right? When when you belong to the club or you go to an event that they do, it just, it, it it's what makes like a, a town, a community and just a place where people feel welcome. And it's so important after the COVID lockdowns and everyone was isolated. So in, it's so important to get back to being involved. And I love seeing that on your social media too. And I, I'm gonna give you props. I think that's, you know, social media is such, um, it's not divisive, but I think it's, it, it, People can obviously voice their opinions, and that's that's part of it. But I think when you're able to showcase the good that's happening, and I saw some of that cleanup over the past weekend too that you guys were doing in Essex, and I thought kudos to you for actually showcasing what's working right and what's going well with that sense of community and people getting involved too. But I mean, that's sort of been your like mantra, right? Six months into this, you're a mom, you've got little ones too. How are you feeling as mayor as you as you take the the main gig, as it were, in the town of Essex? Well, it's definitely has its ups and downs. It's an honor to to serve. And I am I'm staying true to my roots and in, in what got me here. And that's being involved in the community. I'm planning a, a mayor's yard sale for charity. So that's the next thing on the burner. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, you know, it's it is hard having little kids. I'd say that that is that is the hardest part, but it's also kind of the most rewarding we had uh, vegetables donated by the Harrow Rotary and I put my children on their bicycles with the peppers and uh, tomatoes in their bicycles and we we drove around to the Harrowwood cottages this weekend and they were excited to do that. So as hard as it is uh, juggling it all and sitters for nighttime meetings, I think it's worth it. And I think that um, moms and, and dads, you know, younger people in politics, they have a lot to a lot of value to bring to the table as well. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting too. It's a different perspective, right? Um, especially with everything changing in the world today and and getting back to it's a different perspective, but I think you hit the nail on the head, Mayor Bondi, too. It's getting back to our roots and getting to the sense of helping out your neighbor and uh working collaboratively as well. Um when it comes to the, the the munchkins, do they ever say ma like like where are you at? Are they like, Yeah, my mom's mayor, this is pretty awesome. Oh, well, they try to, they will be like, well, you could just tell that person what to do because you're the mayor. And I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that. Right? But the day that I won the election, the next day they are going around to, to school saying, uh, my mom's the mayor, my mom's the mayor, which is actually really cool. Because when I first got elected, I was 29 and somebody called me and they said, you should run for council. And I said to this person who was a doctor in the community, I said, what's council? That's how much I knew at the age of 29, right? And so them at the ages of like three and four, they already know about municipal politics and just um, they're constantly coloring for seniors. You know, they, they pick up garbage with me. You know, they watch when I'm when I'm at home, they watch the meetings with the babysitter and say, that's my mom. <laughs> so they're going to be really engaged at movers and shakers. And I'm proud to be their mom as well. So in addition to being a great mayor, great mom, there are some unique challenges too, right? But also opportunities in those challenges facing uh, the town of Essex, right? Um, let's talk about some of those opportunities and, and some of those challenges and, you know, skewing those head on over the next couple of years. So we're growing and because we're growing, uh, we have to make sure we have capacity, right? Uh, hydro flickers are constant, are constant in our municipality almost everywhere, kind of more so in Harrow and Colchester. But residents want reassurance that we have water capacity, sewage capacity, hydro capacity. So we want development, but we want to make sure it's smart development. So that's one of, I think, the biggest challenges that, of course, isn't unique to Essex alone. Uh, some of the opportunities are, you know, our, our wineries, our beach, uh, all of the tourism going out there. We have the Grove uh, Hotel Motel opening in Colchester 
really soon in the next couple months. So that'll be a place uh, for people to stay. Um, we're still struggling with the short-term rentals. We have a licensing bylaw in place. So that's that's kind of smoothing out. It's been a, a year or so we've been working on that. And downtown beautiful Essex is uh, getting its facelift. We are a fairly new council. So that comes with uh, good and bad too. We st we're still learning and there's not a lot of, I have the most history on council so that there's, uh, there's not a lot of uh, old timers on council like there used to be. So that comes with pros and cons as well. But we're, we're a fresh council, eager to learn, a fresh administration. Uh, we're getting along well and things are looking really bright in Essex. You know, some of the challenges, too, in addition to the opportunities out of there, too, would be the lowest assessment and the second most roads to take care of in Essex County. You talk about all the different areas that make up Essex from Colchester to Harrow to Essex itself. I mean, those are things that have to be factored in, I would assume, over the next couple of years. Yes, it's you know, we we want to keep taxes reasonable as well, but it is really challenging in our municipality. We're the, we're the second biggest after Lakeshore and we have a lot of roads, a lot of rural roads and road work is so expensive. So everybody will say, well, when are you doing my road? When are you doing my road? And it's really hard to say, hey, there's only so much money to go around. So we are working on a roads plan so we can start communicating and making sure that the roads are done based on need rather than politics, right? That's always a challenge in politics. But yeah, you know, it is um, it is challenging being a low assessed municipality. A lot of our property is farmland and that that's great. We need to eat more than anything, but it doesn't bring in the high revenue like the industrial. So we're going to try to get more industrial, too, and that will that will help us. And that I would assume, Mayor Bondi, is part of that whole picture of what's coming. Right. And that's part of saying if you have more people in the municipality, you've got more homes. And if you've got more homes and more families, there's more business. And if there's more business, you know, the economic viability of the town uh, continues to grow. It's sort of like feeding the beast, right? Attracting the people there saying, hey, this is what Essex has to offer from Colchester to Harrow to Essex itself. How do we make this happen? Yes, and it's that balance, right? We we need to, Essex uh, Centre is almost uh, grown in terms of capacity of residential unless we start expanding. We do have some places, uh, McGregor's going to be challenging the next couple of years because it's shared with Amherstburg and we have to look at uh, sanitary capacity there because it would be shared. So that is a little bit challenging. We I, th I think we'll see rapid growth in Colchester, which is going to be interesting because we have to uh, balance the needs of the residents in Colchester who have moved there for that quiet village. So yes, we do need to grow in order to bring in more tax revenue. We just need to make sure we're growing smartly, alleviating the concerns of our residents are, that are already here. You know, I believe firmly that I was voted in by the residents that are already here. And uh, that's the reason why I voted down the, uh, the water park, the contentious fun water park in Colchester village that was proposed. So it is that balance and public consultation. That's key for me too, right? Getting public buy-in, hearing from the public, being out there and being visible, which is what I do on a daily basis. Thank you, Essex Mayor Sherry Bondi, doing a great job in the town of Essex and lots to look forward to. Uh, this will sort of kick off uh, a municipal tour uh, on the show over the next couple of months. We're going to be tapping into our connections with uh, municipal leaders right across Essex County and talk to uh, them about what's happening in their region. So Essex getting geared up, doing some major investments for renovations and, and different things to add value to existing residents and also looking ahead to the future too about what's coming down the pipe with the Gordie Howe Bridge, uh, with the new mega hospital, and uh, of course the battery plant and all the feeder plants that are going to be corresponding with that massive investment. So again, a big shout out to uh, Essex Mayor Sherry Bondi for spending some time with me on the show earlier this week. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for this edition of the show. We're back on the 23rd, the day after Victoria Day. One of my favorite guests of all time. She is a good personal friend of mine, one of the hardest working ladies in Windsor and Essex County. Maggie DeRoche from the Windsor Parade Corporation is going to join us and give us a preview of what's coming up this summer for Canada Day and all the activities, including the party of the year that will be taking place on the riverfront. I cannot wait to share some details with you on that. And that'll be coming up on Tuesday, May 23rd, 8 p.m. live here on social media. Don't forget, we're back again live this Friday night with Ask an Expert and Diane Palmieri from Stonebrook Landscaping is going to be my guest talking about some of the issues that we've had in our yard 
and some landscaping trend, uh, escaping trends in 2023 as well. So that'll be coming up this Friday night at eight o'clock brought to you by Essex Home Hardware. And once again, shout out to Tecumseh Home Hardware for sponsoring this edition of the show. Awesome people to deal with. And you got to stop on by because they are more than just a hardware store. Getting some Facebook comments, people saying, hey, where did you get that mermaid thing that you were talking about for your daughter, Olivia? I'm telling you, right at the cash register at uh, Tecumseh Home Hardware. They had a few about a couple weeks ago when I picked one up. So if you have a little munchkin, a little wee one in your life, and they like to play in the water, you will be parent of the year if you scoop one of those up. So swing on by and uh, tell them Arms sent you. In the meantime, be good to each other. We'll see you back here live Friday night at 8 o'clock. Have a great rest of the week, and uh, we'll see you on social media. Thanks for watching the Arms Boom and Like Project. Take care and uh, stay safe.